you know, while we were praising and worshiping. The Lord gave me a vision and, and there was a stream. And we were like swimming upstream. Trying to bust through, trying to bust through. And some didn't bust through. Some didn't make it. But the ones that made it went into this glorious paradise pond. I'm telling you, there was dolphins in there. There was everything in there, swimming. It was beautiful. It was glorious. And they were just having the greatest time. And, and it was the pond of the deep things of God. And when they left there, they left there with a message. But so many people didn't make it. They didn't go swimming with the Lord. They gave up. They quit. Their minds were too focused everywhere else. Grabbing onto everything. Still not able to deny themselves. And I said to him, why, Lord? He said, because they don't pray in the spirit enough. They don't make time to pray in the tongues. He said, so they can't get in. See, praying in tongues builds the bridge to get across. Worship builds the bridge to get across. But you can't worship until you've prayed in the spirit enough to get there. It gets you to the front part so you can start accessing. So praise and worship and praying in tongues is vital. Let me tell you, when we pray together in tongues, after we get done worshiping and you still can't pray, you're in danger. I'm going to tell you right now, you are in very danger of being wiped out by the enemy because you're too far out. You're not even in the holy place. You've been removed from the holy place to the outer courts and your next place is outer darkness. If you are that weak, you will be taken out because you're too entangled in the affairs of the world. You're too entangled in yourself. You can't deny yourself. Oh, you want to express outward, but inwardly it's corrupt. It's contaminated. Is everybody okay? It's reality. It's reality. And people wonder why they're not getting the things from God like they're supposed to be. Amen? We are in a time right now. I mean, it's critical. Everybody knows it. I mean, you look around the world, you know it's a critical time. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. Come on, you want to go swim with the dolphins and stuff? Go swim with Jesus and have a great time? <laughs> Hebrew, chapter 1. You didn't have anything planned today, did you? Just to meet Jesus, right? <laughs> oh, glory. Whew. Thank you, Master. Is everybody there? <laughs> Is anybody there? Verse 1, let's speak it. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his Son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds who being in the brightness of his glory in the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he also by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, he said that these are what we call time-released messages. He says he spoke through the prophets. 
Amen. Then he spoke through Jesus. Then he spoke to the Holy Spirit. He spoke through his recorded messages, his gospel. He speaks through the gifts of the Spirit. He speaks through dreams and visions. Amen. But there are time, these are time release messages for me and you. These time release messages are vital. He said to me, you know why people are disappointed? I said, why? Because they missed the appointment. I said, you mean they're disappointed? Yes, they get disappointed because they miss, they miss my appointment. See, God sets appointments for me and you. He sets time release messages for me and you that are appointed times for me, to, for me and you to grab hold, to get revelation, to get illumination, to get counsel, correction, and direction, and protection. But people miss them because they're too involved in their life. They got a good talk, but they ain't got the right walk. Hello? Cleansing. We're getting cleansed out here. Time release messages. And that's what the enemy loves to do is distract us so we miss appointments. Amen? He distracts us through events, through thoughts, through emotions, especially emotions, to try and cause us to agree with his influence and not agree with God's influence. Every day, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. That's a path. Amen? It's a path. It's a path you and I are following. You know, to believe and to follow is essential. People can say they believe, but don't follow. So follow is everything. And in this following, we are following him in his unction and leading and everything. Being led by the Spirit allows me and you to be connected with eternity. Not being led by the Spirit disconnects us. Amen? So in this, there's things that God puts in divine order so that we're not distracted. There are time-release messages that people are being distracted, being taken out of position, and don't even realize it. Let me share with you, the Word warned us. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm flying all over the place today, so just bear with me. Oh, happy days. First Timothy chapter 4. Thank you, Master. In verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, or in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Keep speaking li lies and hypocrisy. Having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Wow. Deceiving, lying, seducing, deceptive, evil spirits. They are carriers of a message of corruption, destruction, death. And promoters of the flesh. And lust. And what they're trying to do is cause people to fall away, amen, or be distracted. Why? From receiving the time release message God has for you specifically for you. See, he has them for the body. He has them for the fellowship. But he has them specifically for his individual children. And too many people miss it. Too many people. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Now let's go to John. John chapter 1. The gospel of John chapter 1. You know, in this then what begins to occur because there are these deceiving lying, seducing spirits and so forth. They cause a falling away. They cause a drift. They cause compromise. They cause complacency. Where a person is no longer consistent. 
still led by how they feel again. That's, that's a killer, man. Killer. Oh, it's just how I feel. It's too bad. And, 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 and so in this, what happens is people receive false messages. Then they receive false hopes because they're deceptive and lying. Then they have false expectations. Hmm. And in this, it promotes a false reality. And their identity begins to drift and they begin to grab a hold of another identity, which is a false identity or temporary. Remember, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy everything. You know, there have been great men and women of God who've lost it all. The devil's no respecter of a person. He's just looking for an open door. That's why the word says, make no place for the devil. Too many times people are making place for the devil. Not being consistent, not being alert, not praying enough in the spirit. When God is giving you that wonderful, beautiful gift of tongues and to misuse it is a shame. Time release messages. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe or to what? Follow. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. In other words, he was a time release messenger. John was a time release messenger. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world. Jesus was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him and followed him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. In other words, they were born out of time. Does everybody get it? They were born, see, you, are, you and I are born again out of time. We're not born again in time. We're born out of time. See, because the eternal realm is a timeless place. The Spirit of God is timeless. So you and I were born in a timeless moment, even though it was a moment here in the temporary. Because that day that you and I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, our life here ended. Is everybody okay? And it says here, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he whom I said, He comes after me as preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of God, the Father, he has declared him. Again, John was a messenger, a time-release messenger. Then Jesus came, who was also a time-release messenger, to carry the message. They carried a time-release message from the Creator. I want to be more specific in the area of just, not just God, but Creator. He is creator of all things. I know this is going to sound strange. We call him God, but he created God. Hello? The creator created all things, even God. You mean he created himself? No, he created uh, 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 identity of God so that you and I could comprehend. Does everybody get that? Hallelujah. So salvation for all was available. Illumination and revelation to the seekers. Hello? So in this, John, Jesus, they released messengers from the Creator to change the course of life. They were sent to change the course of life, was ruled by lies, lust, and deception. They are carriers of light and truth, 
and to make your way of escape. Released at an appointed time, predestined by the Creator. Amen? Creator, in other words, overseer of all. In 1 John chapter 1, time release messages. Where there's a time release message, there must be a messenger. Amen? Verse 5. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. And this is a message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is... Hello? Anybody there? Oh, okay. God is what? Light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not practice the truth. If we say, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we, de we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Again, salvation was the message for all illumination and revelation to the seekers. So there's more than just salvation, isn't there? There's much more. There's more than just the outer court. There's a holy place and the most holy place. And of course, then there's that pond of revelation and glory, which you have to fight to get to. You've got to swim through. You must deny yourself. You can't stand at the banks and expect to get in. Amen? Hallelujah. Holy Ghost like to push you in, but, you know. 1 Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 1. You know, in that, because of the enemy loves to distract, so we miss these divine appointments and messages. Again, that's where a lot of disappointment comes, is because they miss the appointment. One of the things he loves to do is bring people into a lazy state. They get lazy. Well, I know Jesus, that's good enough. No, it isn't. <laughs> that makes you more dangerous. Why? Because you are more accountable. So an enemy is going after you more than someone that doesn't know Jesus. Or says that they know Jesus. Again, there's a lot of talk, but not enough walk. Not enough endurance. Not enough going through. Not enough fight. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in verse 1 let's speak it more of a brother and I declare to you the gospel which is a message which I preached to you which also you received in which you stand by which also you, have, you are saved if you do what? If you hold fast to that message to that word which I preached to you unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received. In other words, he received a time release message at a specific time he released it because he is a messenger. Does everybody get it? For I delivered to you first of all that which I received that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that he was seen by o over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present. But some have what? Fallen asleep. In other words, they passed away. After that... He was seen by James, then all of, by all of the apostles. Then, last of all, he was seen by me also. One born out of what? 
out of due time. He was born again. He was born out of the physical time. He was born into a timeless realm. So being born out of a timeless realm and accessing that timeless realm allows you to receive messages that can be released in a certain time appointed by God. Is everybody okay? The gospel released message from the creator. Born out of due time. Saul became Paul. He was born again by the timeless spirit from a timeless realm to release messages according to the creator's time. You can figure that one out. What was it to do? These messages, according to the Creator's time, was to correct, direct, and protect. In other words, so that you and I may receive counsel, correction, and direction, protection. And by being obedient to them, it brings promotion. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Glory. Luke chapter 4. In verse 13. Can everybody hear me? Good. It says, now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from Jesus until a what? Opportune time. Hello. He waits for the opportunity to release a message to us. Familiar spirits. Seducing spirits. Deceptive spirits. Doctrines of demons. Anything to get your attention to delay your progress, your movement, or to get you out of position. Then Jesus, in verse 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, in other words, his hometown, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book, the prophet Isaiah, and when he had a point, when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now you got to remember what he's about to read was a released, amen. It was a time release message by a prophet, but the time hadn't come yet, amen. So Jesus comes right and now. He's going to read and declare this message of being manifested. And so he took up, and, 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 and he found where we were supposed to read in verse 18, and he spoke this. He was releasing it. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom or liberty to the captives, and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set the, at liberty those who were oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book. And he gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, it has been released and fulfilled. In other words, it was released generations ago, but today it's being fulfilled. So a time release message doesn't mean fulfillment is that day. It could be days, weeks, or generations after. But many times now I'm telling you God is releasing messages for me and you for a now. It's for what? A now. We must be ready for a now. The Spirit of the Lord is a voice of the Creator. Today a time release message has entered the corrupt world. That's what Jesus was saying. Today, this message, I am fulfilling this message that was released. Releasing a corrupt world of darkness, taken captive by time. So that the light and truth and escape to all mankind would be available to those who follow. Again, that's why Jesus says, I am the way. In other words, he's the way out. Amen. Second Corinthians 3.
time release messages. If you are not attentive to them, to these messages, you'll miss them. That's why we should always be seekers. In other words, we're ready. That's why everything you and I do, Lord, is this you? Is it time yet? Is this what you want me to do? Why? Because I don't want to miss. Tell them, Lord, don't let me miss it. I don't want to miss what you have for me today. I don't want to miss your message to me. I don't want to miss revelation. I don't want to miss illumination. And I don't want to miss your visitation. You must ask him. Because what you release is sealed. Amen? Second Corinthians 3, verse 1. Let's speak it. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our what? Epistle. You're a messenger with a message. Written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us. Written not with ink, but by the what? The spirit of the living God who is the voice of the creator. In other words, in you, you are a time messenger that carries release messages. At a certain time, God is going to use you to release them. But you must be attentive. You must be a seeker. You must be connected. You know, there's a lot of people say, I want to be used by God. Well, you ain't faithful enough. He can only use you a little bit. You must be faithful, consistent. You must be able to deny yourself. Now, God can use anyone. Amen? But they don't get the credit for being used. Hello? Clearly, you're an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, in other words, the voice of the Creator, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the flesh, that is, of the heart. Why? Because the heart is the core of all desire. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter, but of the Spirit, which the Spirit is the voice of the Creator. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. In other words, these time-release messages are life-changing. We are an epistle of Christ, messengers. We're time-release messengers. We're guided by the Spirit, the voice of the Creator. And 1 Corinthians 4. See, this is where identity is maintained also. Without your identity being maintained, you will drift. You will miss it. You'll be more concerned with the affairs of life than you will with the things of the kingdom. Your fulfillment will be out of the kingdom, not in the kingdom. You'll have false messages bring false hopes. You know, listen... One of the things the Spirit brought to me this morning was about faith. He said, there's faith that's real, and there's faith that's not real. He said, there's faith that connects. Amen? There's faith that's in the Creator that connects. He said, there's faith and even common sense sometimes. Does everybody get this? Then there's faith that's not in common sense, because some common sense is just not faith. But he says, if you can't discern common sense, how can you discern faith? Does everybody get it? There's a common sense of everything. Even in the kingdom, there's a common sense. Once you become a child of God Almighty, there should be a common sense that is faith. So there should be a, an area to where our common sense doesn't go beyond limitations where it's false. Where it's a false expectation. Our faith should be in God and in whatever he's going to do and let him do it. Not us. Amen? Let him do it. But still there is a common sense. Amen? 
If you're going to be a nurse and you're going to take the final exam without studying, you're going to fail and you ain't going to be a nurse. Hello? If you want to learn how to get a license for driving, if you don't practice driving, hello, you're not going to get a license. Which these are approvals of things because there's a common sense level there. Does everybody get it? So there are people that just think faith is going to happen without common sense. It's not. Just won't. And these people get disappointed because they're missing the divine appointment of God releasing the message of them. So many people are holding on to things and not willing to let them go. They're still holding on to them, emotionally holding on to them. They get on Fleshbook and express all their emotions. Stop it. It's ridiculous. Why? Because you reconnect then. The enemy knows how to play people. So they may not talk to people, but they get on Fleshbook and they talk to everybody. Oh, this is how I feel today. Oh, shut up. Who cares how you feel? Give it to God. Express a message from God, not from your emotions. Amen? Man, it's time to grow up. It's time to be men and women of God. Stop the foolishness. Quit playing the game. And grow up. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, this is what... Oh, shut up. Flesh book. That's why it's called flesh. It should be called soul book. People fight with their emotions on flesh book. Well, you don't, you don't understand. I feel like this. Oh, really? Well, I went through this and you went through that. Who cares? Give it to God. Step out of that foolishness. Foolishness. What is foolishness? It's a person that's fooled. It's a false message. That's what the Bible talks about. They're fooled. They call them fool. Why? Because they've been fooled. And it's not just because it's April. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians something. Where are we at? Four. Thank you. <laughs> Verse one. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of the anointing Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. These are time-released messages. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. That means a person full of what? Faith. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. He examines himself, but he doesn't judge himself. He leaves the judgments to God. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Hallelujah. We should be known as stewards of the ser or servants of the anointing. And, and, and stewards of the mysteries of God or time release messages. And it's from the voice of the creator. The creator. The creator. The one that created everything. The creator. Now if you don't have a desire for those things. Then you're in trouble. I mean bottom line. This is where you should examine yourself. If I don't have a desire for these things. What are my desires? What's the intents of my heart? What am I looking for? What do I want out of life? People want more worldly things out of life than more God's presence. Oh, I just want my children back. I want my husband back. I want my job back. I want this back. Forget it. Cut it loose. You got him. You got everything. Amen? Amen? You got him, you got everything. everything. All of these things become an idol. And they cause disappointments because they're missed appointments. Amen? Oh, happy days. All right, let's go a little further. <laughs> First Corinthians 1. Time release messages. 
I wonder why the Holy Spirit had us worship longer today. We needed a cross. We needed a backstroke today, man. Man, it was beautiful, glorious, awesome. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For the message of the cross is what? Foolishness to those who are perishing. Why it's foolish? Because they're fooled. Amen? They're accepting a false message. But to us it should be what? Who are being saved, it should be the power of God. Because that's where you and I came from. We came from the cross. You know when they pierced Jesus on the side? What came out? Water and blood. That's where you and I were birthed spiritually. Right from his side. That same side that Eve came from, from Adam, is the same side from Jesus that you and I came from. That's why we are called the bride. Amen? Verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the uh, disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, nor no many no noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put the shame, the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put the shame to things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Powerful. The message of the cross, a price of Jesus, to true messengers. He is the true message and the true messenger. It's blind to those who are not willing to hear. They're not willing to hear. But it is life and power to those who are hearers and followers. Amen. But to maintain it, there must be revelation. There must be connection. There must be another message. You can't miss the messages. You know, we come together on Sundays and so forth, and we're getting released time release messages. Amen. But that's for the body, isn't it? And of course, it's for individuals, but then there's ones that God gives you personally. Personally. Those are revelations, personally, that bring you encouragement, that bring you direction. What, who to marry, who not to marry, what to buy, what not to buy. Man, you need those time-release messages or you'd be in trouble. You'd be marrying a clunker and buying a clunker. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Glory. Second Thessalonians 2, is everybody there? In verse 1? Or, yeah, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you or fool you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, 
the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now listen to this. There is a falling away that is, it's already happened. It's increasing more and more. We are in the falling away. This is why we know it's the last days. Amen. Falling away. People are being taken out. They're falling from the faith. They're becoming compromised. Some people are just hanging on by threads right now. Because they're not able to cross over. They're not able to swim the stream. The world is too much influence to them. Their families and everything else is too much influence to them. They can't let go and God can't trust them. And they can't become messengers. They carry a simple message, but not time release messages from him. And, and in this, we see this falling away has increased, but the message of God has also increased. His time release messages are increasing more and more. Why? Through those who are awakened. There are many who are awakened now releasing the message. Simple messages from them. It's a message, it's, a, it's an awakening message of reality, of current time we are in right now. You know, people are finally being awakened. I mean, we, without what was going on right now, there's people that are still asleep. You know why? Because their life is being affected. Finances. Got to wear a goofy mask. You can't go into places without certain things. I mean, there's... It's not as much food on the shelves. Prices have gone up. Gas has gone up. It's affecting people's lives right now. The media is getting more crick crooked. The more exposure of evilness. More exposure of children being abducted. The abuse of things. More things that are happening over the world. All kinds of things. More wars. More the everything. Where the word tells us that it would be the. Uh, in the beginning of sorrows, but we're coming to the end of the beginning of sorrows for revelation. So there are people that are awakening because their life is being influenced or interrupted. And they're finally going to God. Unfortunately, some of them are going to the wrong places. But the ones that are going to the right places are awakening in an area where Christ is drawing them. You know, Iran, in many countries, there's tremendous revival going on. Because Jesus is visiting those places. Why isn't he visiting all places? Because some places don't need visitations. They have his presence. You know, I'll never forget when I was in Haiti. And my daughter and I were walking. And these people were worshiping the Lord in a field. And man, the presence of God hit me. Boom. And we were just walking by it. They were in the field and we were on a road like. And I went right to my knees and I said, Lord, why? Why? Why is it so, your presence so strong here? And he said to me, because I'm all they have. I'm all they have. And until it, it reaches into people that I'm all, their ha I, um, I'm all they have, that presence will never be like that. We've got to reach it to where he's all we have. He is our fulfillment. He is our everything. No matter what. No matter what. Amen? Even when you get fulfilled with certain things, or you get blessed with certain things, your blessings should never be your full fulfillment. They should, you should always allow, thank you, Lord, but you're my fulfillment. Amen? Falling away has increased. And because of falling away have increased, the time release messages have also increased from the Creator. And Malachi 3. A couple more scriptures. No, no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah! It's a good day to die, isn't it? Malachi. Oh, Malachi. Ah. Is everybody there on verse uh, chapter three? Come on. 
And we'll start at uh, verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger. How many of y'all want to be a messenger? And he who prepared the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, and whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. He's talking about Jesus, the true messenger. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and as a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering of ri in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah, Jerusalem, will be pleasant to the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the former years. And I will come near you for what? Judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, and against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, and against those who turn away an alien, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me, and I'll return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? And he says, will a man rob God, yet you've robbed me? But you say, in what way have you robbed me? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. In other words, he's not only going to re release a time release message, but time release prosperity. Amen? See, these are coming right now. Time release messages come by prophetic. Amen? The God's getting ready to release an aggressive anointing and prosperity so that we can be a storehouse for God on earth as it is in heaven. Is everybody okay? In 1 Corinthians 14. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. 1 Corinthians 14. In verse 1. Time release messages. Let's speak it. Pursue what? Love and desire spiritual gifts. But especially that you may what? Prophesy. That's a time release message, isn't it? Amen. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries, time release messages. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you have prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Wow. That the church may receive what? Edification. In other words, in this, tongues, when you and I are gathering, tongues is the gathering of time. It's gathering. When you and I are speaking in tongues, God is releasing in me and you mysteries. He's releasing me and you messages. Mysteries are also messages that are unknown. You pray in tongues, the message comes to you. When we gather together, a tongues are glorifying God, but God is releasing messages in each and every one of us. Why? At a certain time, that message will be released from you. But if you don't stay connected, that message will dissipate. It will be removed. Why? Because the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So you and I must protect those messages by staying connected and filled with the Spirit. Jesus said the first thing, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. We can't forget that. 
It's the Spirit of God, the voice of God, the voice of the Creator that holds everything into effect. Everything is held by His voice. It's created with His Word. But it's held by His voice and His presence. Everything. Amen? Hallelujah. So what happens at a certain time, his mysteries of eternity are stored, then released at his appointed time through those with clean hands and a pure heart, who are faithful, who are consistent, who are loyal, and who are available. They don't say, not now, Lord. Hello? Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Hallelujah. And verse 1. Let's speak it together. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my what? Transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. In other words, the enemy is there. That's why you and I must put Jesus there. Against you, only you have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire what? Truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom which tells you what to do. So what's he requiring? Truth in the hidden parts. Amen? Truth in you. So you must have clean hands and a pure heart. You must be faithful. Filled with faith. How are you going to be filled with faith if you're not filled with the Spirit? You won't. That's where the Lord says, I always set my, the Lord before me, no matter what I do. And I'm going to close in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. In verse 2 it says, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men. That's where a lot of these problems are coming from right now but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, in a message. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. For whose glory? Our glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even though no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Creator teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the carnal man, the old man, does not, the worldly man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. So they do not receive the messages to give the message. In fact, they have a hard time even comprehending them. For they are what? Foolish to them because they are fooled. They're deceived. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the what? Mind of Christ. Time release messages. Be alert. Be prepared. Be sensitive. Be discerning. And be ready. Amen. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for fresh rain. 
Hallelujah.